finish up the DIY belt grinder in this video. So I stopped by my local metal supermarkets. That place is pretty sweet. So they were super nice. They took me back and they showed me all the material they have and they, they ended up cutting some pieces for me, some, some of the pieces that you already saw. Plus this, they had this scrap 3 16 plate and it's like 24 by 18 and a half and the size that I need is 20 by 14 I believe for the base of the DIY belt grinder. So we're just going to use the plasma machine and cut everything out. Well, we're going to cut the holes first, and these are going to be very undersized holes. And I'm just going to finish drilling them out and then tapping them. With this plasma machine, I haven't got to use it very much just because I've been working with the CNC, doing projects with that, doing more jobs with the CNC mill, and then this has sort of got pushed back on the back burner. And I want to give a little bit more praise to the guy that helped me with this because I feel like I didn't give enough credit to him and I linked him here his his video channel his YouTube channel and he has some awesome stuff I think he's he finished up his he built his own fourth axis for a Tormach 440 so go check that out because he's he's helped me a ton with this thing and he's still continuing to help me so I want to thank him again for all the help he's given me to start out with, I want to use a Sharpie marker and just put it sort of on the side here and, and zero it with a Sharpie marker. I want to see the actual, what kind of tolerances we're getting with this thing, just to see, just for fun. So I'll run it with the Sharpie marker instead of the plasma machine going, just to see what's going on. Got the Sharpie marker all strategically mounted up with electrical tape, and now we're just going to see what we can do. So that was really not an accurate presentation of what was supposed to happen. This thing was sort of like moving all over the place with the electrical tape. Not a big deal. So I just said screw it with trying to figure out what to do with the Sharpie marks and all that stuff. So I just had this scrap piece from when I did my first cuts and I cut out a six inch square. And here I have it marked at, it's almost dead on six that way. And almost dead on six that way as well. It might be just a hair more than six, but that should really do for plasma cutting where the nominal tolerance is like plus or minus 0.1 inches so I think that'll be okay So I'm right at the one inch mark on the other side, so I'm very close to 20 at the one inch mark again, and I'm a sixteenth, but in the other direction. I'm within a sixteenth though, so that's not too bad once again. Well, I hope you're ready to see some of the most mediocre amateur welds you've ever seen. So I welded the legs on backwards to start off with. So I have, I, in a fit of rage, I took a sawzall and hacked the legs off and hurried up and put them on the other side. So basically the holes, the mounting holes for this piece and the motor were flip-flopped and it wouldn't have worked. So yeah, that was very exciting. At least I uh, got a lot more practice in welding done, so that's on the plus side. Finished up all the welding and now I'm just uh, I drilled out these holes and now I'm tapping the holes. where we went completely wrong with this thing. Not completely wrong, but something was hugely fat fingered to the point where I'm almost embarrassed to show this. Oh. 
we're way off with this thing by a lot. We need to push this thing forward maybe three inches, which it really isn't that much. Three, four inches maybe on this thing. That's maxed out, so we want this thing down a little bit so there's tension on it. So we're really off, I don't know, maybe, maybe five inches here. So this thing needs to be an extra five inches longer than it already is. Not a big deal, but we still went wrong in the model somewhere. And I believe I can show you where I fat fingered something. But before I get into that, these plans, the actual real plans that actually work, are available. I mean, I have them down in the video description. You can go to that link. You can go to what, my website and find the plans for this itself, all the parts to machine it, and just everything you need, basically. And also linked is the wheels from eBay. And other than that, you'd be ready to go. You just make your own custom plate. Uh, you might take the motor back just a hair longer just to, you know, get it to fit because this is going to stick out pretty far now because I already ordered another one of these and it is like an extra, uh, this is 8 inches, I ordered one that's 18 inches just to be sure. So this is the 3D model after I fixed it and to sort of simulate the belt I added this part right here and basically it, I just made it tangent to all the wheels. And to find the length of the belt, you can go to measure each one of these, and it'll give you the length of each one. And even the arcs right here, it will give you the lengths of those as well. And so what I basically did was click each one, write it down, and then I added them up on the calculator on the computer. What I think I did was fat fingered something. Either I looked at something wrong, and then, or I punched it in the calculator wrong, one of the two. I probably should have done this more than once, but that's sort of how I messed this thing up. So I went back in here, recalculated it. Sure enough, it was wrong. Should be 72 inches or 6 feet. 2 by 72 is what the belt is. So that ended up being what was wrong with this thing. And unfortunately, I had to order another piece, as I've said before. And it is like 18 inches long. I think this one here is... Yeah, that's 16 inches long, so I went an extra 2 inches on top of that just to be sure that I had enough. So, it's going to stick out a little bit further. It's still going to be pretty rigid, just all this aluminum here. I mean, everything is thick stuff. Half inch here, inch thick here, and it's on sitting on top of a hunk of steel. So, I mean, it should be very rigid enough to, to support this and stop things from vibrating all over the place. So I'm sort of disappointed that I didn't get to turn this thing on, but we will save that for the beginning of next video, and I should have everything good to go. And as I've said before, this model is available in the link below, and it is also on my website. So if you want to take a look at that, do whatever you want with it, then be my guest, do whatever you want. Uh, but I think that's it for now, so thanks for watching.